Welcome to Healing Hope and Health, the show proudly brought to you by Hospice of Washington County. I'm Bernadette Wagner, Community Outreach Coordinator for Hospice of Washington County, and I'm glad you could join us for today's program. Today's guest will shed light on the important work that Hospice of Washington County provides to our community every day of the year, as well as tell us about some interesting ongoing support groups and upcoming special programs. On Healing Hope and Health, we hope to educate, support, and engage our viewers. If there's something you want to know about Hospice of Washington County, or if you have a question about our services or eligibility, please let us know. We would love to hear from you. Today, I'm pleased to welcome Kathy Campbell, Bereavement Manager for Hospice of Washington County, and thank her for joining us on today's show. In her position, Kathy always displays great sensitivity to those who are grieving, but recognizes that some people need even more support at certain times of the year. As the weather cools and the leaves begin to change colors, people begin to think about the holidays. Holidays can be stressful for anyone, but especially so for those who are grieving. We're fortunate that Kathy is here to discuss grief and the holidays. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you. We're so glad you could be here. So can you tell us, are there important things to keep in mind regarding grief and the holidays, certain I ideas? There sure are. The holidays absolutely can be an incredibly joyous time, full of festivity, but albeit very, very stressful uh, with all the activity. When you add grief on top of that, it can be very difficult, if not agonizing, for some people in trying to figure out how to get through. And there's so much to consider over the holidays. Um, it's, it's important to think about, you know, do we want to carry on traditions as we always have in the past? Do we want to try something completely new this year? Do we want to incorporate a little bit of both? Do we want to avoid the holidays altogether and just get away for the entire holiday season? And any of those options is perfectly okay. If I have to point out though, if you were to choose the latter and just get away for the holiday season, it's good to know that next year may be the time that you have to think about all of these things. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really important to be able to um, acknowledge your pain. You, people are grieving. And if that's the case for you, it's very, very important to be able to have those feelings and express those feelings. Uh, we don't have to go through our days. We don't have to put on that mask and pretend like everything is okay mm -hmm. just because other people need us to be or want us to be. It's okay to, mm -hmm. ha to have your pain and, and acknowledge it. It would be important to find people who can support you in that pain and Maybe meet you where you are. Maybe somebody who has uh, going through the similar thing. That would be very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very helpful. I think it's also very important to um, take charge at a time like this when it can feel like everything is out of your control. It's important to be able to think ahead of time about what you want. Not only what you feel like doing, what do you have the energy to do. Right. Really important to prioritize at this time and think about your limitations. Give yourself a break in realizing that, okay, if I am grieving, uh, of course I'm not going to be where I was before. I am going to have to limit myself. That's quite okay. Okay, and how about some other tips you can share for individuals to consider, uh, such as eliminating unnecessary things? or All very, very important. Again, that prioritizing Think about what you want to do for the holidays and think about with whom you want to spend your time. That's all very important. Um, I would suggest for people to avoid any, this is true for all of us, mm -hmm. any overindulgence in either alcohol or food mm -hmm. that can certainly temporarily serve as a great comfort to us, uh, but in the long run can be an added burden. Um, really important to be able to, uh, at this time, build in time to relax over the holidays. Really important at this time, uh, communication. Communication with families is so important. You know, here we might have an entire family who is grieving 
and, and grieving, grieving differently. Very differently, of course, and have different needs at this mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So to be able to talk ahead of time about the upcoming holidays and what do we want to do? How do we want to spend this time? How involved do we want to include any sorts of remembrance or things like that? Okay, and for those who are grieving, do you find it's uh, it's best to move forward, trying to forget, or is it better to try to remember and, and incorporate that remembrance part? That's a good question, and, and actually it's a little bit of both. I think it's, it's very important to be able to feel our pain, have our pain. It's very important to be able to put our pain aside mm -hmm. and put it up on, on the shelf and just take it down and deal with it as we are able. It's, it's actually what we call dosing. And that's a very important technique to be able to get through a day, perhaps get through the holidays. It's okay to put it away for a little while. How about while. decorating during the holidays? Uh, how does that fit in with the grieving process? It really is an individual decision. Mm -hmm. I think for a lot of people, um, especially uh, there are people who might say no that's an added burden that's an added stress I, I can't do that right now maybe people who want to do that on a limited basis um, certainly people who want to continue to go all out and engage in the holidays I think it's important to, to point out too that while we're talking about grief and and sadness and, and trying to deal with that it's also okay to be happy during the holidays. Right. You know, right. They, it is a joyous time and it is a time to, to celebrate. And if we can be happy, wonderful. If we can be happy in our grief, wonderful. If we can't be happy, I hope at least we can have, everyone can have some peace. And yeah, and to experience the joy of the holiday isn't to negate the loss of a, the, the grief from a loss of a loved one. Absolutely. That's for sure. Well, I was wondering if you can share some of the upcoming uh, activities that your bereavement department's doing at Hospice of Washington County. Sure. Uh, we have coming up on Monday, uh, November the 17th, we have a Coping with Grief at the Holidays. Uh, that will be an event held at our Northern Avenue office. The following evening, November the 18th, that very same workshop at our Community Life Center in Hagerstown. And in December, both a daytime and an evening workshop back at our Northern Avenue office. That's great. Thank you, Kathy. By having Kathy share with us the different ways that people experience and cope with grief during the holidays, we learn that there's no right way to grieve. Fortunately, we also learn that there are many helpful coping strategies and that we don't have to grieve alone. I'm grateful that Hospice of Washington County is offering coping with grief programs on November 17th and 18th. If you'd be interested in joining those or you know somebody who would benefit, please contact Hospice of Washington County. Thank you. I'm the hometown favorite. I'll outsmart you. I will beat you. I'll be surrounded by fans cheering me on. There's no place like home for fighting cancer. My turf. My time. My team. Expert care, close to home. The John R. Marsh Cancer Center at Meritus Health. Hi, I am Dr. Olenzak at the Pain and Spine Institute. I specialize in the most advanced procedures and technology available in pain management. At your visits and procedures, you will always see me for continuity of care. I would like to thank all of my patients for allowing me to provide you with the specialized care that you need. To give you this level of care requires a team. This is your team at the Pain and Spine Institute. To become a patient, call 301-739-7900 or go to painfree-md.com. I'm pleased to welcome today Melissa Fowler, Manager for Hospice Care Consultants of Washington County. She has a bachelor's in healthcare administration and has held her current position for about a year and a half. Prior to that, she worked for Heartland Hospice. Melissa and the other consultants at Hospice of Washington County work diligently to inform, educate, and explain the services provided by Hospice of Washington County. They also host a number of events designed to connect those they serve with available resources and build positive relationships with other members of the health care community. Melissa joins us today to tell us about some of the events Hospice of Washington County has and will host and the organizations with which it will partner to meet the needs of those they serve. Hi Melissa, thanks for being here. Hi, good morning Bernadette. So can you tell us just a little bit about some of the events you've offered in the past month or so? Sure. 
We recently had a event for fraud um, protection, mm -hmm. and that event went really well. Uh, we had representatives from a local bank, from Adult Protective Services, and the Sheriff's Department they came in and taught ways to help prevent fraud um, and overall prevention. Well, that's great. And so, d did they teach them about identity theft, to financial exploit, how to prevent? financial exploitation, stuff like that? Yes, they did. And how many people would you say attended that event? Why, to be honest with you, I don't know. I know we had a huge turnout. We uh, received phone calls asking when we're going to hold this event again um, and if it was going to be any time in the near future. Will so. you be doing it again? Yes, we are. Yes, we're going to. Um, we're planning on trying to bring it to the Hancock area and then again in Hagerstown, but no exact plans have been made yet. So you'll keep us posted on that so that we can let the public know. Yes. That'd be mm -hmm. great. And uh, so it sounds like that was really useful information. I know you have another event coming up in which you're partnering, partnering with the Washington County CARES group? Yes, that's right. We have a Caregivers 101 group um, or workshop that we're going to do. And we're going to do that both in the Hancock Life Center and also the downtown Hagerstown Life Center. Um, that is going to run from 5 until 8 in the evening. Okay. And do you know the days of those? Uh, I guess the one in Hancock is going to be on November 4th that's and then the one in Hagerstown will be November 18th. Right, that's correct. Mm -hmm. So is this a, an event that costs money or can anybody attend? There is no cost for this event. Uh, we actually will be providing a light dinner as well. The only thing uh, you have to do is call our office to register and you can reach us at 301-791-6360. And what kind of information will people who attend the caregivers workshop uh, glean from that evening? This workshop is designed for people who are caring for a loved one, family member, um, to teach them what other resources may be out there for them and how to cope with the everyday stresses of being a caregiver. Um, we have people in the community who deal with our viewers every day that will be presenting this workshop. And so it's sort of like the idea, in order to be a good caregiver, you also have to know how to care for yourself. So there's going to be presenting information about how to provide care for them as well? That's right. That sounds like it would be really uh, helpful. Uh, Melissa, what is the number that people can call if they're interested in registering for the Washington County uh, CARES uh, workshop? They can call our hospice um, office, which that number is 301-791-6360. And I understand that uh, the hospice consultant uh, also are doing an interesting uh, program to honor our veterans in November. Can you tell us just a little bit about that? Sure. We are excited again to offer um, another veterans breakfast and that will be held on November the 8th at 8.30 in the morning and that is at our hospice location on 747 Northern Avenue. This is also a free event. It's a good time to come out so we can honor our veterans and they can bring a guest to also enjoy a great breakfast. So it's open to vets and uh, one guest. Right. Okay, that sounds great. And can they contact that same number if they're interested? Yes, they can. Okay. Well, thanks for letting us know about these important events. I'd like to thank Melissa for joining us today and for the important work she does in reaching out to our community. Hospice Washington County is well known for providing quality end-of-life care, but it also engages and supports healthy seniors through programs such as the Caregivers 101 Workshop, the Fraud Prevention Seminar, and the Veterans Breakfast. Whether you are strong or healthy or have limited time, Hospice Washington County, which is always focused on quality of life, offers services and programs to strengthen our community. If you would be interested in, in attending any of these programs mentioned by Melissa, please check out our website at www.hospiceofwc.org or call 301-791-6360. If you have any questions you would like us to address on Healing Hope and Health, you can send them to us in an email to info at hospiceofwc.org. People don't realize it takes a lot to care for a family member in your home. John's dad was very headstrong, so I think that was a, a lot for him to get over and try to come to terms with that he had a terminal illness. I would recommend everybody to get hospice involved at the get-go. When, when you first learn about it, get it set up, it, it's going to make it, I mean, it, it's terrible what you're going through already, but it's going to make it easier for you in the long run because they, we couldn't have done it without them. Call hospice today. Hospice of Washington County, when time matters most. From the smallest item of jewelry to the largest ceramic elephant, every 10,000 Villages handcrafted product makes a remarkable journey. All over the world our products travel similar paths. 
over thousands of miles and years of artistic tradition. Our handcrafted gifts represent work that builds villages and sustains souls. They are the dream of a better life made real. Every product is a miracle. The famous American writer Kurt Vonnegut said, quote, what should people do with their lives today? Many things, obviously, but the most daring thing is to create stable communities in which the terrible disease of loneliness can be cured, end of quote. This is pre precisely the vision that Hospice of Washington County has for its community life centers, and one which today's guest, Helen Layton, embraces wholeheartedly. The community life center exists to support those who are grieving, foster a renewed sense of community, pro provide life-enriching programs, and empower residents to share their talents, skills, and knowledge for the good of the community. Helen, an entrepreneur and owner of the Sewing Basket on Main Street in Hancock, is a force to be reckoned with. She's a master quilter and a certified long arm quilting specialist who joins us today to talk about her involvement with the Hancock Community Life Center and the volunteer program she is spearheading there. Welcome, Helen. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad you could make it. Thank you. So, uh, Helen, I, I want you first to tell us a little bit about how you heard about the Community Life Center and when that was. Well, I would say that was sometime towards the end of June. Uh, it was after our family's long string of tragedies. You came into the shop to introduce yourself and when you came in and said you were representing hospice and blah, 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 all I heard was hospice. And I thought, no, I, this isn't good because we had hospice. And in my area, hospice means death. Had no idea that you were bringing a life center to us. And so after you talked to me for a while, then I thought, hmm, this is really great. You came at a good time because I was really grieving. I lost a brother-in-law in February. A sister in June, two weeks later, my sister who lost her husband, lost her granddaughter. And so, yeah, we had a lot of grieving. And I thought, hmm, this is really interesting. I wonder what I can do to help. And I, I remember talking with you and you were saying, can this, uh, at the Life Center, is there support for people who are grieving? And I said to you, yes, and you can get involved. Right. So tell us wh that, what you decided to do. Well, whenever you said I could get involved, it's like, what can I do, you know? And then I thought, I showed you a quilt that I had made, my friend and I had made for our church. Mm -hmm. And we had people's names on, and the book just so happened to be lying there on the table. And I picked it up, and between the two of us, we thought, this is what Helen can do. And so this is what Helen's doing. That's right. So what does it mean to the Hancock community to have Hospice of Washington County in your community and to invest in the Community Life Center? What do the residents feel about it? Uh, the residents that I have talked to about it um, are very happy that something has come to Hancock. Generally, everything's in Hagerstown. You have to go to Hagerstown, and finally something is coming to Hancock, and, and we are hoping that maybe more will come to Hancock. That's great. So, Helen, you're a community volunteer leader of a very special project. Uh, you mentioned that you are a quilter. Uh, together, uh, you, we came up with a name called the Stronger Together Memorial Quilt. Can yes. you tell us a little bit about what that project involves and your part in it? Um, well, my part is it. I'm making it. Mm -hmm. um, what it involves is I have squares and you have them up at the Life Center and grieving people are to go in and sign the name of the person they're grieving for and then you bring it to me and then I put it into the quilt. I make the quilt. Can, do, like, can we just hold this yes. up just a little bit like this? This is just one little section of the quilt. It's it's beautiful. Uh, we had so much fun shopping for the fabric, Yes, we too. did. Yes, yes we, we did. did. Um, so the idea, as we were talking about this, was that one square by itself doesn't really offer a lot of warmth and comfort, 
but when connected with others, there's a lot of warmth and comfort in a quilt. And this all came about because um, when my mother passed away, there's five of us, we did not get together like we did before. And by yourself, you're grieving by yourself. But after we decided that we were going to make quilts every Wednesday, um, it, it's, been, it's, been a, it's been a healing, a healing process for us all. So and I think that's what this is. So would you encourage uh, people in the community to get involved? Oh, I mean, definitely, definitely. What, what would you say to somebody who's thinking about looking at their talents and can they get involved? Well, I have talked to some people and it's like, I have no talents. And I said, no, everybody's got some talent. Um, talk to your, your friends, ask your friends what your talent is or, or you know, someone you work with. They'll tell you what your talent is. I mean, you can go and, and um, sit with people. Um, people grieve in different ways. That's children true. grieve, children grieve. Mm -hmm. I mean, children grieve over their animals. You know, everybody grieves. People tell you they're okay after something tragedy or after some tragedy. That's not true, they're not okay. Yeah, so the idea is to get involved, share your talent, and at the same time make uh, support others in the process. Exactly. We like to think that by coming together as a community, we're connected much like the squares. Exactly, the exactly. Well, Helen, I thank you for joining us today. In one of my first conversations with Helen, she said something like, people can't just want things to be different or better. They have to be willing to make them so. Right away, I knew she was a woman of action and that she would be a fantastic community volunteer leader. And boy, was I right. If you are wondering how you can get involved in one of Hospice of Washington County's community life centers, it's simple. Attend the support groups and workshops offered by the bereavement department, or participate in one of the programs led by a community volunteer leader. Or if you're like Helen, you can take stock of your skills and talents and submit a proposal to lead a program. The program topics can and will be as varied as the talents of those in our community. Attend or lead a book discussion or poetry workshop. Learn or teach others to meditate, knit, or scrapbook. Whatever your skills, if you're interested in building community, we hope you'll consider sharing your talents at one of Hospice of Washington County's community life centers. Remember, it is in relationship with others that hearts are healed and communities are strengthened. Barbers Carson Jewelers has been your community jeweler for over 110 years. We have the region's largest selection of diamonds, designer jewelry, including bridal, gold, and silver fashion jewelry, and fine Swiss timepieces. We strive to combine quality, expert personal attention, and affordable financing to create an exceptional shopping experience aimed at exceeding your expectations. At Carson's Jewelers, there's something for everyone that will bring a smile to that someone special in your life. I'm the hometown favorite. I'll outsmart you. I will beat you. I'll be surrounded by fans cheering me on. There's no place like home for fighting cancer. My turf. My time. My team. Expert care. Close to home. The John R. Marsh Cancer Center at Meritus Health. People don't realize it takes a lot to care for a family member in your home. John's dad was very headstrong, so I think that was a, a lot for him to get over and try to come to terms with that he had a terminal illness. I would recommend everybody to get hospice involved at the get-go. When, when you first learn about it, get it set up, it, it's going to make it, I mean, it, it's terrible what you're going through already, but it's going to make it easier for you in the long run because they, we couldn't have done it without them. Call hospice today. Hospice of Washington County, when time matters most. Hospice Washington County has many events, programs, and fundraisers coming up. Take a look at our calendar of events and find the ones that interest you. We hope you can join us. We look forward to seeing you. Looking through the lens, I see a smiling man. I take a photograph. In my mind you'll never fade A million winding roads Who knows where we will go today Or tomorrow Never give up and I'll never give up on you It's a beautiful life If you never stop dreaming I'll never stop dreaming with you It's a beautiful, beautiful
choices that we make every single day it's chances that we take and i will always take a chance with you a million winding roads who knows where we will go today or tomorrow through the lens I see a smiling man I take a photograph in my mind you'll never fade a million winding roads who knows where we will go today or tomorrow as you can see there are plenty of events to choose from I attend many of these events and travel across Washington County speaking to what seems to be hundreds of people each week without fail people thank me for the care delivered to their loved ones I always say the same thing. Thank you for sharing your experience, and I will certainly pass it on to those who deserve your kind words. Thanks to Hospice of Washington County's visionary leaders who decided to host Healing Hope and Health. We are now able to pass on this heartfelt gratitude and publicly recognize the teamwork and dedication of those staff members who meet the physical, mental, social, and spiritual needs of our patients. Today, I'm pleased to read a letter sent by Mrs. Shirley Burke in gratitude for the wonderful care provided to her loving husband, Clyde. To Preach Kibrob Gudetta Chaplain. To Teresa, Brenda, Yolanda, Sandra, Tommy, Mike, and others. Thank you all for being there for us throughout Clyde Burke's illness. Thank you for putting up with us. It was a very difficult time. I really think my mourning began the spring of last year and increased day by day as I saw Clyde's health waning. The month of May 2014 was the saddest and hardest time to endure in my entire marriage. We were married 44 years the day he passed. During his time of sickness, Clyde gave his heart to Jesus. The night he passed, there was almost a wonderful peace that, I, that filled the room. Belinda, my daughter, and the rest of the family found it, felt it when they joined us that night. I've never felt such a wonderful peace. I'm sure it was God's way of letting us know everything is okay. Again, thank you, Shirley Burke. HWC knows the commitment of its employees, but it's nice to know that others recognize it as well. I am both sorry for Mrs. Burke's loss and incredibly grateful for her taking the time to write such a beautiful letter. If you would like to share your hospice experience on healing, hope, and health, please contact us at 301-791-6360 or email info at hospiceofwc.org. We look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for being here with us. See you next time.